This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the smoked, the savory, the carry steak, and the four horsemen. You can't go wrong with any of the great flavors over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Again, that is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. While you're there, be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. You want more seasonings? Check out some of the great packages that the Mad Canadian has, such as the Just Send It, the Sweet Heat, and the Whole Hog, which consists of one of each of the great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ. Dot com. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, this morning for the very first time, I tried the Fierce. Now, I'm, I, I've said on this podcast several times, I'm more of a medium roast guy. Mm-hmm. But my goodness, this Fierce might just change my mind. Uh, I'm not, and this is this is just me talking right now. This is this isn't me trying to. I this is just me talking right now. It was amazing, amazing. Uh, it's my favorite dark roast I've ever had. Just next level amazing. I'm kind of mad I only have a sample bag worth, but that that's for me to fix later. Uh, if you want to buy your own fierce, or if you want to check out some of the medium roast, or potentially some of the other dark roast that they have over at ironbeancoffee.com you can do so yourself at ironbeancoffee.com uh world class hand roasted micro roasted ohio based marine veteran owned coffee iron bean coffee america's local coffee roaster how's it going everybody Yes, everyone. How is it going? I do have the video feed up, right, Kyle? Oh, I, I, I might not actually. There you go. Sorry about that, Nomad. Kyle, I told you I was forgetting something. I told you. I, see, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make my, the thing that's my fault your fault now. I told you I was forgetting something. <laughs> Oh, let's see what else we'll screw up today. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, we're we're trying to predict the 2022 class in today's episode. So we're going to screw up a lot because trying to predict a class this far out is pretty stupid. But uh, let's stop talking about the thing and let's start doing the thing. How about that? Yes, sir. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing right over here. How are you doing today, Jared? I have no complaints. I have no complaints. Uh, Kyle, we have a lot to get to today. Uh, Last week, we predicted the 2021 depth chart. Uh, Many, many months out, which was probably pretty stupid. And today, we're going to do something even dumber. We're going to do the 20. 22 class yeah we're gonna try and predict the 2022 recruiting class uh we are 11 months out from early signing period we are slightly over 12 months out from their national signing day (coughs) so uh we are doing the dumbest possible thing right now all right kyle but before we do that before we do that we are going to check out the uh some some news we got some news this week so we're going to hit a couple other small well not small things one of the things is is actually rather big um greg madison ohio state co-defensive coordinator is set to retire soon Uh, i believe ryan day said at the end of the month which it is almost always that almost always that what i kyle english I'm bad English. At it. <laughs> well, by the time our <laughs> next episode's out, he should be. Okay. All right. Uh, so, yeah, he's set to retire very soon. Um, Kyle, do you want to spend five minutes on, on basketball, or would you like to save that for 
the Kyle's Corner, or do you have something else for Kyle's Corner? How would you like to handle that? Um, we'll, we'll talk about the basketball team. I mean, it's it's big. I mean, Ohio, yeah. State, Ohio State's doing really Pretty well. well. They're, they're doing really well. They've um, they're currently, as we're recording this, and of course it's going to change by the time this gets broadcast, but 15th ranked in the yeah. country. Um, had a tough, close loss against Purdue earlier last week, but then made up for that with a big, and I mean a big win on the road against a very talented Wisconsin team. This team might be better on the road. Although, like I was saying, uh, I said a few times during the course of the football season, I mean, and I get that like travel sucks, so I'm not saying it doesn't matter at all, but how much does home field slash home court really matter in I don't this know, but, COVID but how's era. Doing, how's this doing pretty well? I mean, last Saturday, went on the road to Wisconsin, won. Previous Saturday, went on the road against Illinois, won that. And then, bef- and then before that, went on the road against a, a good, I'm not going to say very talented, but a good Rutgers team and won there too. And then the previous one went on the road against a an above average with Northwestern team as well. Yeah. So, I mean, there you go. Why is that still saying object deleted down there? Um, Nomad uh, says, watch it. You're going to anger Teddy with that word. Only members of our discord get that joke. <laughs> uh, our, our, our little sloop chat thing on the video is not working. It's not saying the person's name, but um, I, I can't fix that while we're talking. So we're just going to have to move forward. Um, so, yep, the next next game's here. Hussey got, has a long break here. They're not going to play until next Sunday, Jared. They got all week off here when they get to host Sparty. Yeah. And by the way, Sparty not doing too well. A lot of the Blue Bloods yeah. this year not doing well. Kentucky, Duke, UNC. Yeah. Not doing too well this year. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of a disaster in college basketball right now. Well, because I think... And this is just me theorizing. A lot of those teams you met, not all of those teams, not all of those teams, but a lot of those teams you mention often function off of young talent and having young talent is really bad in the COVID era because you, you're not having the amount of, you don't have experience. So you, you can't, you don't have time to put in a bunch of different concepts. They're being forced to play very vanilla defenses and the teams with the older players who aren't necessarily getting those one and done players that have a tendency to actually win national titles aren't, you know, the, the youth, the highly talented youth model Mm -hmm. is not working quite as well in college basketball Mm -hmm. this year. And again, that does not apply to all of those teams. But I, I think that's at least yeah. my my running theory as to what's going wrong. All of those teams I just mentioned, UNC, Duke, Kentucky, and even put in Michigan State in there, all of those teams unranked right now. Yeah, that's crazy. That's it's been a long time since that's happened. I'll just I'll just, I'll I, just I saw an amazing tweet. I don't think Michigan State was included in it, but it was it went back decades the last time all three or four of those teams were undefeated i don't don't have it in front of me and i'm not going to look for it but because kyle this is this is a recruiting episode so we're we're moving forward um well we're going to talk about the greg madison thing in detail probably next week when maybe we'll have some names for who ohio state might bring in to 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 replace him uh Mm. based off of the press conference that Ryan day gave this weekend, or excuse me, this, this past week. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes after an NFL guy from the Pete Carroll coaching tree we, would be my assumption, but we're, we're, uh, we're going to maybe come back with a list of names next week, assuming something crazy doesn't happen between now and then, but I, I'm not hearing anything that would suggest that a hire is that imminent at the moment. Yeah. Yep. But all right, let's talk about well, just a couple of updates here on the 2021 class. Yeah. 2021 class is pretty simple right now. There are two targets left. Period. There are two targets left. Uh you have JT 
Two E Molau. Nailed that. I said it too slowly, but the syllables were right. Um, <laughs> a lot of crystal ball activity. Uh, a, a, a little bit of a, a Nevada nugget. Well, you know, we're, we're, we're two days out from that hitting the message boards at this point. I think we're safe to say uh, Nevada over at the Buckeye Scoop dropped the the equal sign on JTT. Now, we had been hearing a lot lately that JTT probably wouldn't be signing on National Signing Day and might wait it out and try and get some official visits in. So. Does the sudden movements of crystal balls and does Nevada dropping the equal sign for JTT, does that mean that we're now going to have him sign actually on National Signing Day? I don't have a ton of clarity on that, but it has me optimistic. But now versus later, he was never going to be an early enrollee anyway. So now versus later doesn't really matter a ton. I He's a Buckeye. Just as long, just as long as his Jan Hancock is on that letter, and and faxed <laughs> Fact. to Ohio State. <laughs> All right, the other name, Rayshon Davis, Rayshon Davis. It's a, it's a J, Jared. You should understand how to Rayshon. Rayshon Davis. So let's let's talk a little bit about Rayshon Davis. <laughs> yes, Herbie Hancock. Uh, Rayshon Davis was. If you rewind, let's rewind one week, Kyle, one week. Ohio State was out, according to literally everyone who I read and talk to. Done. Over. He was going to USC. Period. Done. Over. Then we got news breaking late last week that said he and his parents are coming to Columbus on their own dime to visit. Um. Probably not coincidentally, it's also the same weekend that the early enrollees are moving into Columbus. What does all of this mean? Well, even with the visit, I was still feeling a little pessimistic only because I had just been hearing for weeks from people I trust that it was done over. It's uh, no, just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. But <laughs> the tide is apparently turned on that. And I'm not saying he's coming to Ohio State. I'm not saying he's coming to Ohio State. But we went from 0% to maybe about 10% once we heard that he was coming. And now we're maybe more at 50. Maybe slightly above 50. Maybe 55, 60. I'm not I'm not saying, hey, guys, he's coming to Ohio State. Not not going to say it. But it's uh, it's a lot of momentum. It's a lot of momentum. So feeling cautiously optimistic on on Rajon Davis um, there, I'm going to have to eat some crap on Twitter because I, I basically said, hey, guys, it's not happening. Get over it. So. By the way, and, and so even if he doesn't come to Ohio State, I'll still admit that I'm wrong. So that's it. I'm admitting I was wrong. Mm-hmm. All right. So looking at it with these two here, Jared, uh, let me go back here. Rankings right now, Alabama has a pretty, pretty um, comfortable lead. If you want to look at number one and two teams ranked for the 2021 class here, even if Ohio State is able to get both of these, yes. JTT and Rajon. Still second. Is it enough to get to that number one spot? It is not. Okay. Just shy. But it's close enough that I'm going to call it a tie. I might be biased, though. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Quick. Well, here's the thing, though. With the, if, if Honestly, even if it's just Kyle, JTT. We have, a, we, have a, we have a lot to get to. I know, but even if it's just JTT that comes over on Ohio State finishes with 22 commits, let's just say. Yeah. I'd still take that as a win because of the average per recruit. Fair enough. Right. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to disagree with you. So right. uh, transfer portal, one name to watch for the transfer portal. Ohio State will be looking to the transfer portal. They absolutely want at least bodies at cornerback, quarterback, and tight end. Now, they will take a linebacker if it's the correct linebacker. 
And I know a lot of kids are look or a lot of I know a lot of people are looking at the kid from USC. Uh, and I just don't see it. I know he's a former five star, but I also think he's injury hampered. I don't see it happening. The linebacker mm. name I do want you guys to watch is Henry Too Too. And I'm pretty sure I nailed that pronunciation. Um, he is a lot. Li- Ohio State does not need to take a linebacker in the transfer portal, but they will for the correct guy. And I do believe Too Too is that correct guy. He's an instant starter at Ohio State. Yep, he he just a little background here. He's he's a top 50, 44th nationally for the 2019 class, so two years ago. Uh borderline five star. Like it was a yeah. nine seven seven nine. That's a that's a borderline five star rating yeah. right there. Um committed to Tennessee and is looking to get out. All right, Kyle. And with that, <laughs> a lot of people trying to get out of Tennessee right now. With that, let's let's get in on the 2022 guys. All right. All right. Quarterback. Let's start, yep. Let's start offense. The the big, the big position here, what really matters for the most part, the position that wins you championships quarterback. Yeah. Uh, quarter, we're, we're done at quarterback. Uh, Quinn Ewers committed to Ohio state. And I know a lot of people are very concerned about the coaching change at Texas. Um, he decommitted from Texas and in large part, uh, at least if you listen to the rumors is because he did not like Tom Herman. So people see Tom Herman out. They see Sark come in. They see what Sark did with Alabama's offense last year. And there's concern. And my advice to you, the listeners don't, if yours actually goes on Austin's on the Austin campus, be concerned until then. Ignore all the Twitter and, me- and message boards rumblings. R E L A X. Yes. <laughs> exactly. All right. That's all right. enough with the quarterbacks. Yep. All right. The slobs, Jared. Yeah. The good old slobs to protect Quinn Ewers. Yeah. Um, already in the class, Tegra Chabola. Some names to watch. Uh, I think the big name that Ohio State still has a really nice chance at right now is Zach Rice. Uh, he's out of Virginia. I know a lot of people are also talking about uh, Gunner out of out of. I don't see that happening at all. Uh, so I'm I'm letting that one go. We're still looking at Zach Rice. I don't feel great about Zach Rice coming to Ohio State, only because it stud does not typically win these five-star offensive tackle players from out of state. And Virginia might just be a little too far away from Ohio for stud to win this one. Uh, Another name to keep an eye on is how how do we want to pronounce this one, Kyle? Hi, Onta Goodwin. Kionta. Kionta Goodwin. We'll go Kionta Goodwin. Uh, this is another. This is a uh, high four star offensive tackle. I, I like Goodwin to Ohio State a lot. Uh, he is out of state, but it's Indiana, so <laughs> you know Ohio State typically, you know, with the exception of Notre Dame, typically gets who they want out of Indiana. So you know, keep an eye on it still. But I, I like good. I think ultimately, if we're predicting this class, which is what we're doing today. I think I'm going to slot Goodwin into the class and I'm, I'm not going to slot rights into the class. Gotcha. All right. What about, what about this last guy here? Emil Wagner out of Wayne high school in Dayton. I think Ohio state uh, can get him if they want him. But I also think that Ohio state has had a tendency, although this seems to be less true under Ryan day than it was urban Meyer has a tendency to wait a little too long to go after the Ohio kids and the Ohio kids feel spurned and go elsewhere. We saw that happen with a couple kids in the 2021 class who I think Ohio state could have used, but maybe just waited a little too long on Mm -hmm. Wagner, I think is a player that Ohio state can have if they take the recruitment seriously. And I think that they will. And I, I think I will slot Wagner into the Ohio state class. You know who the last kid out of Wayne High School that came to Ohio State? Uh, we're 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 on a roll. We're on a rush here today, Kyle. Let's let's go for it. Braxton Miller. Is that right? That is right. 
there wasn't more recent. Wasn't um, Jalen Gill out? Of, no, maybe. No, I don't think so. Okay, never mind. I, I once again, and we're not going to try and play that. We have too much to get to today. Too much right, to get. Running to. backs here, Jared. Running backs. Um, you got you got some names here. Um, let's let's first talk about uh, Nicholas Singleton. Um, the four star out of Roding, Pennsylvania. Is it reading? Excuse me, reading. You are right. Sorry, the, um, in Kyle's it's, defense, it's the, font, for me, the font is very small. Kyle, you might want to you want to bump that zoom up to about one twenty five. That'll help you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, Singleton's an incredibly talented running back. I think maybe a little too talented. Uh, a little too talented to come to Ohio State given the fact that Ohio State has two amazing running backs joining in the 2021 class, a freshman running back from the 2020 class that was getting significant carries this year. Um, I like Singleton a lot. I, I just, I ultimately don't see it happening for Ohio State this year. Uh, by the way, Nomad asks, can Ohio State afford to miss a, miss a year of quarterbacks? Uh, no. Be, because you can bring in all of these talented guys, but quarterback is quarterback and ultimately people transfer out. You need to bring in a guy every single year because Ohio state was in a bad position. Not so much this year, because, you know, if you really, really had to, you probably could have plugged Stroud in, but last year, Ohio State trying to make a national championship run uh, in the 2019 season. Your backup quarterback was, was wasn't going to get it done, and you don't ever want to be in that position ever again. So no, you have to keep you have to keep adding guys. All right, another running back to keep an eye on is Dalen Hayden. Uh, he is uh, out of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I, I like Hayden a lot. Uh, he has uh, some crystal ball love going to Tennessee right now. But Tennessee's Tennessee. Uh, they're a uh, giant dumpster fire at the moment. So I, I, I don't know why anyone who has options and Hayden is good enough to have options would go to Tennessee right now. So I, I, I pretty much will. Uh, I'll cancel those those crystal balls on behalf of whoever put them in. He, he may get a happy meal. Ha <laughs> uh, ha! Another name to keep an eye on, Damari Alston. Uh, how do you like that pronunciation, Kyle? Alston or Alston? I'm gonna go Alston. Alston? Okay. Should I go Alston? Guys, th- welcome to the Sloopcast. Uh, running back out of Atlanta, Georgia, uh, specifically the Woodward Academy. I like. I-, I think if I had to pick a running back in this class which again is probably a stupid thing to do in January. But if I had to pick a running back in this class to eventually join Ohio State, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick this one. Damari Alston, I, I think, is a future Buckeye, but, you know, that's, a, that's an 11-month prediction right there. So I, I'll, kind I of, I'll kind of um, ask the same question here that Nomad asked, Jared. Yeah. Can Ohio State afford to not pick a running back this year or in this class too, or really any year? No. Again, because the curse of Ohio State is you don't necessarily have a lot of players who stick around for a long time. Either A, they're good enough to go find playing time somewhere else, a la Jalen Gill. Or you lose them in three years because they're that talented. So running backs especially, you tend to turn those guys over every three years. And again, Ohio State picked up two great running backs in the 2021 class, but maybe one of them transfers out if they're not getting the playing time that they expect. So no, you, you, you got to keep going. You can't skip a year. Mm -hmm. All right, Jared, maybe, maybe this next group here, maybe maybe (laughs) could, maybe could afford to skip this 2022 year just because of how ridiculously crowded the the wide receiver group is yeah but here's the thing they've already picked up the best wide receiver in the 2022 class 
Yeah, if there's ever, if there is actually a position in which Ohio State could take the year off, it is wide receiver. Man, probably not Ohio though, because it transfers. But mm-hmm. yeah, they have already State, got Caleb Burton. Yeah, and Ohio State still just not stopping there. They're they're looking at quite a few um, really talented wide receivers here as well. So other than Caleb Burton, who's already verbally committed back in November, currently the 14th national um, recruit number one in his position who, who else you got who else does Ohio State have on there or that you see Ohio State can really go after uh Kalen Grays I think I'm pronouncing that name correctly uh, Grays is right I'm not <laughs> the first name I think it's Kalen um, um uh he's a former Arizona State commit uh, he's out of Chandler Arizona uh if you look at his numbers if you just go purely by his composite then I don't, you know, it's not going to be this thing that jumps out to you as amazing. But then again, neither did Chris Olave's. And if Ohio State is targeting him and allegedly from everything I hear, will absolutely take a commitment from him if he chooses to make that decision. Trust the coaching staff. Ohio State does not need to reach at wide receiver right now. So you might say, what the 46th best wide receiver in the country per the 24 seven sports composite and the 24 seven sports proper 46. Why is Ohio state that the, uh, just trust, tr- trust the coaching staff on this one. Trust Heartline. Yeah. <laughs> now, now if it's numbers or high ratings, you want to look at, Maybe you look no further than C.J. Williams um, out of Santa Ana, California. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Incredibly talented. This is another Mater Day kid. Uh, Mater Day, the home of Rajon Davis. And it's a, it's a high school. It's basically a college prep football academy in, in California. Ohio State has a chance here. Um, I, I I wonder if... Again, you you look at fourth best wide receiver in the country. They already have the first best wide receiver in the country. They have an incredibly um, talented and crowded wide receiver room. Is that enough to scare away a kid who's playing all the way in California? Uh, For that reason, I don't think I'm going to include him in the final prediction. But. I, I also would never, ever count Heartline out. So I could very well be wrong on that one, but I'm not going to include Williams in the final prediction. I am including Grays. All right. Anybody else in this class that you want the listeners to keep an eye out or an ear uh, out young for? man out of Georgia named Kojo. Uh, you want to help me out that last name? You want, you want to take a stab at that one for me? Antwi. Works for, yeah. Kojo Antwi. Uh, another wide, uh, like I said, wide receiver out of Georgia, top 20 wide receiver in the country. I, I think there's a legitimate chance he ends up in this class. Uh, I'm just, but I'm, I'm not going to include him in the final, uh, in the, we, we do have a final 25 will reveal towards the end of the show. I'm not going to include him in it, but he's absolutely a name to watch. And let's see, we have nomad saying year of the tight end will never happen again. Uh, I hate to break it to you, Nomad. 2021's the year of the tight end. We already know this. We we saw it happen against Clemson. That kicked it off. That that kicked it off. We're already in the year of the tight end. It's a calendar thing, not a season thing. This is the year of the tight end. Yes. And I say that to move us into the fact that we are looking at the tight ends. Uh, Benji Gosnell and Bennett Christian. Um, These are the two tight ends currently in Ohio State's class. Uh, I think as long as they feel, and by the way, I'm not projecting anyone to decommit from this class. I'm not doing it. Uh, That's not a thing. A, I want to just guess at. I feel like that's inappropriate, but also B, because I've not heard any rumblings to suggest that's a thing that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I, I like I said, Ohio State is uh, I think really happy with these two tight ends, and I think as long as they're confident that they can keep these two tight ends, I think they're going to stick to these two tight ends. And with mm-hmm. that, Kyle, 
I think it's time to hear from our sponsors. Let's see, the Iron Bean Coffee Company, Kyle. Iron Bean Coffee is an Ohio-based, marine-owned, fresh-to-order, world-class, micro-batch coffee roasting company. Uh, I already told you a bit about the Fierce, which I drank for the first time today, and it was amazing. Uh, let's see, some of the other dark roasts. Uh, the Rocco, you can get in a medium or a dark roast. Uh, it's a unique Ethiopian natural. Uh, it's best for those who enjoy coffees that insist on being noticed. The Thor is a medium dark coffee, somewhere in between. The Odin is a dark coffee. Uh, it's tremendous as well. Uh, Nomad is giving the Odin his vote of approval down there. Uh, there's the drink from the skull of your enemy. I have a bag of that. I've, uh, I've not cracked it open yet. The fear no evil. Now, if you like dark roast, this one's not a dark roast. This one's a black roast. Uh, it is roasted to the brink of flames. It is void of all light. So if you like a dark roast, maybe take it to the next level and check out that black roast. And then, of course, there's the staple roast of the Iron Bean Coffee Company, which is the integrity. Um, dark roasted makes a great espresso. I'd highly recommend that one if dark roasts are your thing. Now, there's lots of other coffees I didn't mention. Medium roast, medium light roast, flavored roast. And you can find all of those at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Um, one, th one thing that Mad Canadian is known for here with his seasonings is, is his barbecue. What can you put on your meats, your, your, your hamburgers, your chicken, your whatever the case may be. But what about, what about vegetables, Jared? What about vegetables? Can okay. any of these seasonings go well in vegetables? The answer to that is yes. He has uh, quite a few different um, seasonings here that would go really well on different types of vegetables. Let's start with the Ope, Jared. The Ope, sure. it's a classic Midwestern seasoning. It has cornfields and ranch dressing. It's a wonderful smoked ranch blend to make your guests say, let me just squeeze by you and get some more of that. <laughs> <laughs> or how about the Brits blend, Jared? Um, this is Brits a blend. really good seasoning. Um goes well with chili um i it's, it's chili weather right now i made some chili um last weekend really good in some um chili mixtures there too as well as a potato salad it's a really good um it's a, it's a right amount of heat and savory that goes great on those chilly fall or winter mornings um, or what about the savory as well jared um it's the exact season that he puts on all of his pulled pork it's a salty, savory mix. That'd be your sure favorite at your next barbecue. Check out all those seasonings and much, much more over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. And be sure to use the promo code Sloopcast10, Sloopcast10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. All right, Kyle, it is time to talk about the defense. I haven't talked about the defense. <laughs> defense that needs a lot of help oh. <laughs> from what we saw last year. <laughs> you know, I feel like there's already talent on the team that will take care of that. And if we're, well, if, if we're, if we're waiting on the 2022 kids, <laughs> that's, that's going to take, that's, that's too much time, man. That's too much time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let, let's talk about the defense. All right. All right let's let, uh, let's, let's talk do, defensive. let's do, let's do the middle of the pack here. Let's do the middle defensive slobs here who do you who do you got who do you got here to keep an eye out for yeah so one thing you'll notice is uh especially along the defensive line which is a position that we normally see um ohio state sort of fill out early uh hasn't yet there's currently no commits along the defensive line that being said i really like caden curry uh not just as a player but also as a potential buckeye i think he does end up on this roster when it's all said and done uh, you know, we sort of talked about Ohio State getting their pick out of Indiana and, you know, still having to deal with Notre Dame sometimes, which is, you know, wh who you have to watch out for in respect to Caden Curry. But I, I think that Caden Curry is just almost a Buckeye. I really feel like we're we're maybe just 
waiting on an inevitable thing there. Yep. Top 100 recruit for the 2022 class. Best in the state of Indiana. It almost seems like it would be, it's just a, it was meant to be here. I believe so. All right. Another, another guy you have here who's already a hard commit to Cincinnati. Yeah. Um, Derek Shep- Shepard. Yeah. Uh, he's a just outside the top 250 in the 24 7 sports composite. As Kyle said, he has already committed to Cincinnati. And with all due respect to, of course, remember what I was talking about before when we were talking about the offensive linemen? I said, you know, sometimes Ohio State waits a little too long on these Ohio kids. And maybe that's the case with Derek Shepard. But I got to feel as long as he doesn't feel spurned by Ohio State and as long as he doesn't feel like, you know, he feels passed over or disrespected by Ohio State. I feel like if if Ohio State really wanted to, they could probably move him away from Cincinnati. Uh, he committed to Cincinnati in December, you know, especially, you know, if when we start to get visits up and going again, you know, if he... I feel like Ohio State, with no disrespect to Cincinnati, but Ohio State just doesn't lose these type of recruiting battles. If Ohio State decides that they really want Derek Shepard, they probably do. Again, that just sort of depends upon where Derek Shepard is. You know, d- does he already feel disrespected? Does he already feel this? Does he already feel that? Then maybe his mind is already made up. But maybe not. And uh, Ohio State is just the better opportunity, especially if he's a guy who has his eye on the NFL. Yeah. Um, I mean, we mentioned it before, too. I'll mention it here, too. And real quick, worth noting that, you know, Cincinnati is officially down their defensive coordinator, Freeman, off to Notre Dame. Does that play in? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we still got (laughs) pretty much a year left here. Exactly. <laughs> to find out. So absolutely. Well, looking at the Ohio kids here in general, Ohio State currently with their verbal commits, number one, number two, number three. We talked about uh, Wagner already at number four. Um, Caden Saunders currently committed to, or yeah, currently committed to Penn State at number five. Ohio State also number six with um guy we're actually going to be talking about here shortly um at number six there so ohio state already have verbal commit in a strong lean to getting to five of the top six for the state of ohio yeah absolutely all right um let's let's talk about the rushman here the defensive ends defensive ends here yeah uh ohio state uh, no commitments yet along the defensive ends. Uh, keeping an eye on a few names here. Uh, there, I, I could probably name 10 players here. So with no commitments already in place, this one's real hard to predict. But here are some of the names. Uh, here, here are some of the names. We'll just leave it at that. Here's some of the names. Uh, there's Kenyatta Jackson. Uh, he's from Hollywood, Florida. Uh, Ohio State, I think, is in real good position here. Uh, he is in the 24-7 sports top 100. When Ohio State wants a defensive end, they're always going to be in on the conversation, and they already have a really good relationship with uh, Kenyatta Jackson. Uh, Jaheed Campbell, uh, he is out of the IMG Academy, also in Florida. Uh, here's another really highly ranked guy. Uh, n- not as highly ranked, as Kenyatta Jackson or uh, Anai White, who is the next player we're going to talk about now. If I'm mispronouncing that first name, I apologize. Uh, he is out of Emotep Institute in Philadelphia, a town that Ohio State has been making a lot of inroads in recently. Uh, he is uh, the number two uh, weak side defensive end in the country, top 30 in the uh, just total and the number one player out of Pennsylvania. That's a huge, if you can get white out of Eastern Pennsylvania, like Ohio State has stolen some really great players out of Western PA. Last Mm -hmm. year, they stole two amazing players out of Western PA. If they can continue that trend, then 
I just it's 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 basically a spike in the heart of Penn State. Yes. And the last kid here to keep an eye out for is Trey Bixby, who's already verbal commit to Minnesota. Has been for quite a while now since August. Um, this is again, this is an Ohio kid, the ninth best kid in the uh, state of Ohio, and. Uh, Let's see here. It's 14th nationally right now. So it's, yeah, if, if Ohio State's really looking out for a defensive end here, I, I think this is a someone in your own backyard here over at St. Edward High School, S- someone that um, Ohio State can really look at to see if they can lean him uh, come to Ohio State as well. Exactly. But again, like we talked about with some of the other Ohio kids who Ohio State is not Currently, you know, has not currently achieved commitments with, you know, do they feel disrespected? So that's just uh, names to keep an eye on. Now, uh, we're talking Ohio kids, so let's 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 not wait any longer. Let's talk about the linebackers. Gabe yes, Powers, and- number one player in the state of Ohio. C.J. Hicks, the number two player out of the state of Ohio. Both linebackers, both currently committed to Ohio State. Then we have Deshaun McCullough, who is out of Kansas, but. Uh, family, family is from Ohio. Uh, his mm-hmm. dad went and his brother both played for the Miami Red Hawks. Although at the time, would they have been the Red Hawks for his dad? Not, not, not sure. Moving forward on that. Uh, he is marked as an athlete in the 24 seven sports rankings, uh, but he's very much a linebacker, maybe in the same way you'd think of uh you know, he's he's in that uh, bullet sort of position where he basically think of him in the same way you'd think of maybe Pete Warner or maybe a little more defensive back E, you know, maybe in the way I always say that Troy Polamalu had Troy Polamalu played in today's game as opposed to the early 2000s. He would have been a linebacker. And that's that's sort of how I think of Deshaun McCullough. Uh, in, in a previous era of football, he absolutely would have been a safety in today's game. He's more of a linebacker, but that's why they have him marked as an athlete because he's kind of a tweener. Is he a safety? Is he a linebacker? I do believe Ohio state sees him as a linebacker. Uh, two additional names to keep an eye on, but, uh, by the way, the only reason he lives in Kansas is because his dad is the running backs coach for the chiefs. Uh, uh, two additional linebackers to keep an eye on Sean Murphy, a uh, very highly ranked five star uh, top 20 overall player. He is out of the state of Virginia, a state that Ohio State has had a lot of success in in recent years. Um, I, I think Ohio State ends up getting him. It's tough. It's a five star kid. You never know. We're a long ways out. But as of right now, I'm going to project him into the Ohio State class. And also, yeah, five linebackers. That might be a stretch, but I'm doing it. Justin Medlock, an incredibly underrated kid uh, from the state of Texas, has been linked to Ohio State for a very long time. Uh, I'll just say there's some maybe some other issues in play, but if they sort of get past those other issues, I do think he ends up in the Ohio State's class. Okay. Five linebackers here. I, I do put five it linebackers. Like the number in the final. that Ohio State. It seems like the number that Ohio State just lost. <laughs> well, they, 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 they did just lose four linebackers. Yes. Yeah. And if you look at the guys who are coming in to replace them, they're all fourth and third year guys. I think some fifth year guys. So that next line of linebackers that Kavon Popes and, and, and so on and so forth, mm-hmm. uh, Dallas Gant. Those aren't young guys either. So you are going to see a lot of turnover in the linebacker room, not just this season, but potentially at the end of next season as well. Yep. All right, Jared, here's the fun one. Our DBs, our DBs here. Tell tell us, tell us who to keep an eye out here. Well, already have Jaheim uh, Singletary already committed to Ohio State. Already have Jair Brown already committed to Ohio State. Uh, He is, by the way, the third best player in the state of Ohio. Uh, He was living in Louisiana at the time he committed, but has has since moved to Cincinnati. 
uh, family is from the Ohio area. So he was always a bit of Ohio kid, even if he was technically living in Louisiana at the time. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where things get real interesting. We have two very interesting names here for corners, which is, I think, what Kyle was alluding to. Uh, first name we're going to talk about is Will Johnson. Uh, much like Rajon Davis, this was a guy who a week, maybe two weeks ago, Ohio State was out. Don't even think about it. Ohio State's out of it. He's a he's a he's a Michigan kid, period. He lives in Michigan. Uh, his family, uh, he has he, he's a legacy. That's the word I was trying to find. He's a Michigan legacy. He's a Michigan kid. Everyone just let it go. Let it go. He, it doesn't matter if he's amazing and Michigan sucks right now. He's a Michigan kid. Just let it go. Well, the the tide has turned. And I would now say Ohio State has a really, really good shot at Will Johnson. A really good shot at Will Johnson. So I, I am actually going to project him into Ohio State's class. Hmm. Uh, I, I, I might be wrong, but I am going to do it. I tell you what, like Ohio State has picked off um, some other Big Ten teams, more more notably like Penn State and Pennsylvania and all that. Not too often that you see Ohio State grabbing too many kids away from Michigan. It's usually like they're usually set in stone pretty much. So if Ohio State's able to grab the best player in the state of Michigan who for, for a while now it seems to be Michigan all the way here. If I was able to get their gem for the yeah. 2022 class, that's just a, mm, that's just a, that's just a double whammy there. I feel like Ohio State's pulled some nice kids out of, out of Michigan in recent years. Well, not out of, yeah, out of the state of Michigan. Yes. I meant from someone who's already verbally committed. He's not verbally committed, but everyone had him like maybe, but here's the thing. He, a lot of people, suspected he was pocket committed a lot of people yeah, thought it was yeah. it was game over mm -hmm. so i he wasn't publicly committed okay. although i see what you were saying a lot of people did have it basically over so mm. yeah uh another yeah. name to keep an eye on uh will johnson's the third best corner in the country another name to keep an eye on is damani jackson now a lot of people might be saying hey jerry don't you know jackson nope. just committed to usc I, I'm not, I'm not saying this one's over yet. Now, do I, do I put him into Ohio state's final class? I don't, but I also am just saying it's not over yet. So don't, don't give up on Jackson yet. And by the way, as weird as it sounds, if Rajon Davis does choose Ohio state and Ohio state finally gets that foothold into Mater day, uh, I feel like a high school we talk about with a uh, great frequency on this show. If Ohio State does finally get that foothold in the Mater Day, maybe, maybe we end up seeing Ohio State maybe get back in on Jackson. I'm just, this one's not over yet. I know he committed. I'm just I'm not willing to walk away from from this from this. Yet. It's, a long, it's a long shot. Got a ways to go. But yeah, definitely keep an eye on that. Um, maybe someone that's probably more realistic here, perhaps um, Keenan Nelson Jr. out of um, Pennsylvania here. Yeah, here's another Philadelphia kid. Uh, Kyle, you see what high school he goes to? Goes to so, ugh, Let's try that again. Goes to St. Joseph's Prep School. Now, you want to talk about a prep academy that Ohio State has a foot in. This is where McCord and Marvin Harrison Jr. are both from. So, again, you want to talk about going into Pennsylvania. You know, we already talked about how Ohio State is trying to get the number one player white out of Pennsylvania, out of the Phil, not only out of Pennsylvania, but Eastern Pennsylvania. Ohio State's stolen a lot of kids out of the Pittsburgh area. That's old hat. Eastern Pennsylvania. Best two players, both in Philadelphia. And Ohio State's in great position for both of them. Do they end up getting both of them? Time will tell. But I'm putting both of them in my final class prediction. So. It tells you how I feel. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else for the DBs that we should keep an eye out well, for? Well, for the corner, we have a lot of safeties yet, but for the corners, um, yes. one more name to keep an eye on, Denver Harris. Of all the names I mentioned, he's probably the least realistic, but Ohio State's not done trying. 
Uh, he is the number three corner in the country. Uh, Will, so it's Will Johnson, number four. Damani Jackson, number one. And Denver Harris, number three. Ohio State is in at least decent position with all three of those players. And Keenan Johnson's number 10, for the record, which is, you know, he's still a really high four-star player, so no, no disrespect whatsoever to him. Mm -hmm. All right, safety, I have three names. Three names, and then, and then we'll talk about the final prediction. Um, Dylan Tatum, this is another Michigan kid, uh, marked as an athlete uh, because he could potentially be a linebacker. But I do think Ohio State sees him as a safety again, maybe more of the bullet position type player. But I am gonna, I am going to include him with the safeties. Uh, best safety in the entire country. Ohio State has an opportunity here. He's a New Jersey kid. Um, is Keon Sab? Sab? S A B B? Yeah, I would go with Sab. Yeah. Uh, Ohio State has an opportunity here. I I don't think it works out in the end for Ohio State, but. They're in play. But I'm going to include Tatum. I'm not going to include include Sap. Uh now, Kyle, do you wanna this this is his first name Xavier. You want to take a shot at this last name because Nwankpa? Nwankpa? I, I don't I, I I apologize. I'm just I know I'm not anywhere close. So again, blanket apology. We are the sloop cast, and we can't pronounce names, and that that one's particularly tough. But I do think I'm going to have to learn it eventually because I do put him in the final class prediction for Ohio State. Long ways to go. I don't feel great about it, but I, I do think he's basically he's a Midwest kid. And that to me immediately puts Ohio State in the lead. There's already communication there. There's already a relationship there. And I do think it ends up going Ohio State's way when it's all said and done. But he, he's definitely not someone who I feel He's a guy I feel good about, not great about at this point. Okay, Kyle, uh, that's all the positions. I'm not projecting any punters or kickers into the class this year as Ohio State has a redshirt freshman and true freshman uh, going to be on next year's roster. Okay. I will say, though, Jared, kind of going back about, we're talking about uh, one of the great high schools in in Ohio, Wayne High School, yeah. there, was, there was a few. There was a couple of players before okay. or after um, Braxton Miller. Okay, you, you want to take a you want to take no, a guess? We on don't who have that time. Might be? Just read them. <laughs> um, the Christian Smith. Okay. And Big Bob Landers. There you go. I knew there was one. Well, there right. was two. Well, <laughs> I I knew there was at least one. All right, Kyle, final prediction for the class. I have 25 names here. Uh, actually, right. I have 24 names. I'm I'm slotting in a fourth offensive lineman. I just don't feel great putting any one name in there. So I do have offensive lineman dash question mark, question mark, question mark. So I have 24 names here with an offensive lineman to be named later. So quarterback, Quinn Ewers, running back, Damari Alston, wide receiver, Caleb Burton, wide receiver, Kayon Grays, Tight end Bennett Christian, tight end Benji Gosnell, offensive lineman Tegra Chabola, offensive lineman Emil Wagner, offensive lineman Kenyatta Goodwin, and again, an offensive lineman to be named later. Kyle, do you want to do the defensive side? All right, we have defensive end Kenyatta Jackson, defensive end Enye White, uh, defensive tackle is Caden Curry and Derek Sh Shepard, linebackers. <gasps> <laughs> Sean Murphy, Gabe Power, CJ Hickson, Deshaun McCullough. You forgot Justin Medlock. And Justin Medlock. I had to do, I had to take another breath for that one, Jared. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, DBs, Will Johnson, Jaheim Singletary, and Jair Brown, and Keenan Nelson Jr. There you go. And safeties, Xavier Nwankpa and Dylan Tatum. Yeah, uh, just real quick. Of the names who are not currently committed, the names who I feel great about. Not good, great. Okay. Alston, Grays, Goodwin, Curry. And I think that's... Uh, we'll add Kenyatta Jackson to that one as well. Those are names I feel really good about. Um, the other names, is it's just me trying my best. Mm -hmm. Those, that's just me trying my best. But 
those are, but the, the names I just mentioned are the ones I feel particularly good about. Yep. All right, Jared, super quick here. Let's get into our ask slipcast questions from Stuart E. Stuart underscore E4 US vet. What players do you see changing numbers with the number one and block O Jersey available? Uh, as far as the number one goes, one of the wide, whatever wide receiver who already doesn't have a single dit, it's going to be one of the look at those elite group of wide receivers. Some of them are quote unquote stuck with double digit numbers. You'll see one of those guys get the number one. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as the zero goes, Kyle, I, I think, and I would love to see it. I want to see, I think it's Haskell Garrett. I think Haskell Garrett gets that block that's, O. That's my name. That's my name all over. It's Haskell Garrett. Like it, you, you put another, you put another defensive lineman right there for the another, another block O there. It's I think it's Haskell Garrett. He comes back here and what he what he brings and represents for this defensive line here. Yeah, Garrett. Everything he went through in the offseason, the leader he continues to be, it's Haskell yes. Garrett. Agreed. All right, Nomad here. Hello, Nomad. Uh, how long did you hyperventilate after finding out that CO2 was coming back? Yeah, the funny thing is, Kyle, when we recorded, when we haven't even talked about it yet because we just had a lot to get <laughs> <Yes>. to. <laughs> and because like, why? Because everyone already knows it's not even, but yeah. Um, mm-hmm. the, we had two names who we didn't know at the time we recorded because we already knew about Thayer Munford. We had two names that we were, well, one name we were shocked by and another name that we felt really, you know, could have gone either way and we felt really good about. So Ohio Mm -hmm. State is getting back, of course, CO2. Yes. Uh, That's a shocker. Absolute shocker. Uh, We are also getting back Ruckert. Um, That one I was 50-50 on. I didn't know where that was going. But to get Chris Olave back feels insane to me. And this more so than Thayer Munford and Thayer Munford felt insane to me. But those were the two big surprises. I think those were the, I, th- I think everything else pretty much fell the way we expected it to. Um, Togi, I did decide to go pro and we did project him as coming back. But again, that one, I was like 50, 50 on. Mm-hmm. So the big surprise, the the big surprise that we uh, didn't talk about on last week's episode where we projected the depth chart was Chris Olave returning. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, I hyperventilated a lot. The question, the but, but to answer the question, it, it, t- it, took a, it took a little while. I was, when I saw that, I'm just like, this has to be a mistake. No yeah. way he's coming back. I think, I think Bleacher Report actually sent out like the push alert to the phones saying the opposite because it, a peek behind the curtain, you know, I know from talking to the guys over at the scoop, they write these stories ahead of time. So like, if you notice when Justin Fields went pro every single Ohio state site had this had to basically hit publish on their story. That's it. Yes. The story was written. They hit publish. Now, me, now go, me- Go go track how long it took him to get the Chris Olave stories out because they didn't Rucker they they probably wrote both they wrote both Rucker stories yeah I mean no it was, one bothered it was, to write the Chris Olave story if he came back yeah it was the same thing like with the injury reports a lot of a lot of the the staff already knew yeah who was going to be out so they had that all written out that way when they knew right when Ohio State was going to publish it it was like all right right at 1245, 1045, whatever it is, post. I, I reached out to a couple of people within the Ohio State within the Ohio State no uh media people. I don't I don't I'm not an insider. I don't keep I don't have or keep sources within the program. I don't do it. I'm not an insider. But I do talk to media members and I reached out to a few of them and I just said, did anyone have this? And I just got a resounding no from everybody, every single person. So do I feel bad that we missed that prediction? No, because literally everyone else did as well. I'm glad oh, oh, that yeah. we were wrong. Oh, uh, <laughs> the people who are going to give me crap if Rajon Davis comes to Ohio State, I'll, I'll join in on the party. Give me crap. It's fine. I'll be wrong right. all day if it's wrong in that direction. In right, fact, I think here. that's why my moving predictions 
tend to be mm-hmm. pessimistic because I, if I'm going to be wrong, I might as well be happy about it. Yeah. All right. Moving on here, Jared Buckeye underscore Zach. With CO2 decided deciding to return, it brings a cushion for the next QB1. But yep. do you think this will definitely hurt the future wide receiver stars waiting in line? Kind of yeah. like what we were hinting to at Ken Ohio State forward to not have a wide receiver for the 2022 class. I understand that it means less game reps for them. I get that. But that also means they get to learn from Chris Olave. And Heartline. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's a, a yes, but that's not the conversation we're currently having, Kyle. Um, they also get to learn from Chris Olave. You think Chris mm-hmm. Olave isn't also coaching up the guys? He, he isn't also leading? So it does mean less field time for them, but that also means additional leadership and additional coaching. Mm-hmm. By the way, uh, I just want to point out, Austin also asked the Blocko question, and we're going Haskell Garrett, yes? Yes. Yes. All right, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, Tanner, I think that was the only question from Tanner, but I'm not going to really answer it, unfortunately. Tanner uh, Tanner um, says, with Olave coming, coming back, do you, do you guys expect more transfers out of the receiver room? Well, I mean, we'll answer that question. We, we, won't, we, we won't name names. We, we don't project transfers. That's, that's a line we don't cross. I don't ever want to tell a college athlete that he's not good enough to play at Ohio State and should leave. Which There's is, to me, if you project transfers, that's what you're doing. You're saying, you aren't good enough, get out. And that's just not a line I'm going to cross with amateur athletes. But from a broad perspective, will it happen? Yeah, I expect at least two players, not naming names. I don't even mm-hmm. actually have names in mind. Um, oh, I do. <laughs> well, okay. But just me saying I expect two, that's not me saying these two. I'm yeah. just speaking generally. Mm-hmm. I expect at least two transfers out of the wide receiver room. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Um, Michigan Bucknut um, well, says, he, I'm going to piggyback off of the last question. No, he, he, that's the transferring thing again. Yep. Who do you see transferring? Yep. Yeah. We're, we answered that. Not going to say, uh, let's see, moving down here, Jared, do, 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 <laughs> Buckeye underscore Zach is Tennessee mentally ha- handicapped. Does DP actually just get his sources from, p- from payoffs of Big Macs? Yeah. Uh, Dan Patrick talked a lot about the Tennessee stuff. Uh, he seemed to indicate that Georgia is also cheating, which, okay, might be true, but Dan Patrick's got a lot of stuff wrong this offseason, especially in regards to Ohio State. So Dan Patrick has proven that he's someone who does not have uh, a big filter between what he's hearing and what he says publicly. And therefore, I just I, I, I can't take anything he says overly serious because he's just been wrong a lot lately. And I'm going to not answer the first part of that question. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. Let's see here. But Buckeye but, underscore Zach also, uh, I'm just going to summarize this. He, he sent this after the Purdue game. He's talking about the basketball team. Uh, you know, can Ohio because we saw Ohio State almost give up a big lead and lose. Then we saw them give up a big lead and lose to Purdue. Uh, so he's basically asking about that. Is that a concern? Well, we did see Ohio State get a big lead over Wisconsin. Now, Wisconsin got it down to four points. But then Ohio State got the lead back. So we did see Ohio State since that question was asked, in all fairness to Buckeye Zach, we did see Ohio State uh, hold on to a lead against a really good team and win. So yeah, well, I think we'll let the, the basketball team answer that question. All right. Austin Formation here, Jared, asks, do you think Olave can break Boston's 1435 receiving yards record or are there too many mouths to feed? I think he can do it. Uh, a full. How many yards does he need? Well, the, for the for the single season, it's fourteen thirty five. But he only needs eleven twenty three for career receiving yards. The fourteen will be tough because of what Austin said. There's too many mouths to feed. But the eleven twenty five, that's totally doable. If he stays healthy, that's totally doable. And as long as there's enough games too. So. Um, uh, if I'm mispronouncing this, help me out. He's a new uh, 
He's a new guy in the Discord server, or at least uh, he recently gained access to the Ask Sloopcast due to being promoted within the Discord server. But uh, Kabuto, let me know if you'd like me to pronounce yeah. that a different way, Kabuto. He says, You're what's right. the difference between a preferred walk-on? By the way, Ohio State received another commitment to their 2021 class in the form of a preferred walk-on. Uh, Kevin Wilson's son uh, joined the Ohio State 2021 class. Again, not a scholarship player, a preferred walk-on. Um, and he will play center for Ohio State. I'm doing a preferred walk-on and a regular walk-on. What's the selection process? Um, basically, a preferred walk-on is guaranteed a spot on the team. You are invited to the team. And you basically, you, you have a guaranteed spot on the roster. A regular walk-on is basically you're like a tryout player. You showed up, you tried out, Ohio State deemed you athletic enough that you're not going to hurt yourself. You know what I mean? Like, I, I hate Rudy. Everyone knows I hate Rudy. But Rudy was not a preferred walk-on. He's a kid who showed up to practice and they didn't kick him out of the stadium. A preferred walk-on is guaranteed a spot on the roster. That's 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 the difference. Um, and what's the selection process to be a preferred walk on? Um, essentially, Ohio State goes to you. Then they probably do this with a lot of kids who end up going to Division two schools like maybe Dayton or excuse me, a one double A Dayton one double A. We're already over time. We're not going to get worried about it. But basically. Ohio State says you're good enough to be on the team, but we don't have a scholarship for you. Now, in the case of uh, Kevin Wilson's son, because Kevin Wilson's an employee at the university, I do believe that means Kevin Wilson's son doesn't have kind of gets a scholarship because I don't think employee. Yeah. So I, I probably had to run that one past compliance. <laughs> but um, that's the difference between a preferred walk on and a regular walk on. All right. Um, let's see here. Suncard asks us, Jared, is there any Bill Davis type of coaches on the current staff? I'm going to assume what you mean by that is someone who's not developing players well. And the answer to that is no. Um, my only real concern on the defensive staff right now is one, can Kerry Combs be a defensive coordinator? He's he had one year at it and it didn't go well. And I'm not blaming him for that. I'm blaming seven defensive backs leaving the roster. That's a thing we talked a ton about in the um what we end up calling that episode, Kyle, postmortem. Mm -hmm. We talked about that. And you so if you disagree with me on that, go listen to the postmortem episode. Yeah. Right. I th I but think that's all the I think everyone on the staff are good player developers. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yes, I agree. Stud's not the recruiter I want him to be, as we no. talked about as far as Ohio State. Me being pessimistic about Ohio State getting Zach Rice on the show. We're mm -hmm. on the on the team. Mm -hmm. All right. I, th I think that's all the questions we have for today here, Jared. I, I One more. One more. One from, more. From Austin. Would you rather l lose or not lose Heartline or Johnson? I'd uh, rather not lose Heartline at this point. Yeah, basically, and I that's only because Heartline's younger. Is that wait because I feel like you you're you're likely to lose both of them eventually. Johnson Sr. is in his 70s, he's going to retire at some point. Heartline is too talented to be a wide receiver coach, even at Ohio State, and is going to get poached at some point. Heartline mm -hmm. has publicly stated that he only wants to work at Ohio State and that he's not leaving. But, <laughs> but. Rule one. Okay. eventually Rule someone one. shows up with a ton of money. Um, mm -hmm. so Rule number I, one here. What's that? Rule number one. Yeah. Rule number one, the doctor lies. And yes, even the assistant coaches are doctors, apparently, in, in this analogy. Um, all right. So, Kyle, that, that's it. That's the last of the questions. I, Heartline, based off of youth, but... You're losing both of them here in the next few years, I fear. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Nomad. Nomad says blasphemy on, mm -hmm. on losing the coaches. All right, Kyle, that's the end of the show.
We predicted the 2022 roster, which was ridiculous. Or excuse me, the 2022 recruiting class, which is ridiculous still. Um, we gave... Pre- Do you want to give a final prediction on Rajon Davis? We gave a final prediction on JTT, on Tui Molau. Do you want to give a final prediction on Davis? Hmm. I'm going to go yes. And I, and again, I said he's maybe slightly above 50% at this point. So uh, I say I, I, he's I, I, slightly I, above 50%. Therefore, I'm going to go yes. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go no. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go no. Be, just because of things that I've been reading and all that regarding to his family and all that. So I'm, I'm going to lean no. He stated in an interview. Thank you, Country Buckeye. I, I, I like, I'm glad you like the show. Um, he stated in an interview with Buckeye Grove that his parents told him the decision is up to him. Uh, that's it. And that, that was enough to push me from 50% to 55. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Let's end the show here, Jared. All right. Let's end the show. Um, I want to encourage everyone, check out the sloopcast.com. It's basically it's just a landing site for links. So if you ever want to find out how you can support us financially on Patreon, uh, join our Discord server, which is mostly free. There are uh, premium channels, but there are much more free channels. Uh, you can find out where to find t-shirts. Uh, this is our Know Your Enemy t-shirt, which can be found at merch.thesloopcast.com. If you don't want to wear uh, podcast merch, you can ch- You can also support us by buying some Ohio-based uh, merchandise over at 7071.thesloopcast.com. Uh, Patreon is patreon.thesloopcast.com. Discord is discord.thesloopcast.com. Make sure to check out our good friends over at the Buckeye Scoop and um, find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spreaker, Stitcher, Spotify. And also always be kind to our sponsors, the Mad Canadian and the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, Two companies that we are just incredibly proud to have as partners. Just Beyond the fact that their products are good, they're good people, and we're insanely happy to be working with them. So that's that's it. Um, we we don't just not anymore anyway. Maybe in the past we just took sponsors from anybody, um, but I, I think because of our relationship with these, we we don't we we don't we don't take and not anymore will we just take a sponsorship from from anybody. So incredibly happy and proud to have the Mad Canadian and the Iron Bean Coffee Company as uh, partners on the show. And uh, with all of that being said, Kyle, is there anything in Kyle's corner? Um, one last basketball tidbit here. Uh, the basketball team actually will be having a game this week. Um, they are playing. Just going to verify. Um, verify. Wednesday. Yep, this Wednesday, they are going to be playing a, reschedul- a rescheduling the Penn State game that was originally um, postponed from January 6th. So they will be playing Penn State in Columbus Wednesday night, 7 p.m. There you go. Uh, yeah, uh, on, on that note, the entire Michigan athletic program was uh, just shut down for two weeks. Like the entire mm-hmm. athletic department. Not, not just basketball, not just particularly all. Yeah, they apparently have... And we're not going to get deep into this because I'm, I'm not a scientist and I don't understand it, but they don't just have a COVID outbreak. They apparently have the, the new COVID outbreak. And I'm just I'm just going to leave it at that because I don't understand the science behind it. And I'm not going to pretend to because I'm yep. not an Ohio State podcaster, not an epidemiologist. <laughs> There's a difference between those two things. One person talks about Ohio State football. The other people are doctors. Hashtag shots fired. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the show. Uh, Kyle, that's it for Kyle's corner. That's it. All right. That's it. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a band out of Athens. They're a folk band, maybe crosses the country into some alt or all, crosses the line into some alt country. Uh, but we'll call them a folk band. Uh, they are a band called Camp, uh, that is spelled with two A's and apparently all caps. Not that the caps necessarily matter, but C-A-A-M-P. And the name of this song is No Sleep. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer. Hey, Kyle, my beer is from Athens, too. 
Nice. This is a very Athens based podcast. Um, Completely threw myself off in the middle of the ending spiel. Drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Camp. I almost turned off the recording, Kyle. <laughs> I don't know why. I, we're not done yet. Mm -hmm. Nope. Dogs. Dogs. Oh, you can see my, you can see my Apollo. Mm -hmm. You can't see LG yet. I think she's behind my chair. Right. Mine's all curled up and yeah. just gone. Yeah. Just completely gone. Yeah, he's, he's tired. <laughs> Big ball of dog. He's a, he's a fluff ball is what he is. <laughs> he is. He is. <laughs> uh, Country Buckeye's happy to see Apollo. <laughs> Can we get it? Hey, LG, come here. Come here. We, we need an LG sighting on the show. Come here. Come here. I see a tail wagon. Yeah, she's not going to do it. You can see you can okay. see her butt. We'll have to settle. We'll have to settle for LG butt. All right, Kyle, let's end the show. Um, you want to do the ad read first or should I? I'll go ahead. I All right. Make sure to thank camp. Hmm? You know, make oh, sure yes. to thank camp. And once again, I'd like to thank camp for ending today's episode and also like to thank the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company for sponsoring this episode. Mad Canadian just has 14 great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Hey I heard a rumor that he's going to make some of the, the seasons seasonal. Seasonal Ooh. seasons. So seasonal you, seasonings. Be sure uh, that's to, a rumor I heard. So if you if yeah. you want one of them in particular, you might want to go ahead and buy those before they go behind some sort of seasonal wall. Yes, yes. Also, be sure to check out the Mad Canadian's um, social media, Facebook and Twitter to find out where his uh, food truck is going to next because he doesn't tell us. <laughs> Either way, um, be sure to check out the great season over at the Mad Canadian BBQ .com. The Mad That is the Mad Canadian BBQ .com. Be sure to check out the packages such as the Just Send It, the Sweet Heat and the Whole Hog, which is one of each of the seasonings over at the MadCanadianBBQ.com. Be sure to also use the promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the SLOOPCAST is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based micro-roast, roast-to-order, hand-roasted, Marine-owned, Toledo-based coffee company. All of their beans are fair trade certified, USDA organic. Integrity is what their company is based on. They do the right thing even when no one's looking. They import all of their high quality beans, uh, in many cases from single farms, um, some of their coffees are available in K-Cup. They have gift cards available. They have a sampler available. So if you don't know which coffee you might want, you can essentially buy a six pack of, of coffee where you can get a small sample of a bunch of their coffees. Um, free shipping over $50. They have a subscribe and save like service. If you do find that one coffee that you absolutely love. And again, they have an amazing selection. Uh, I talked about some of the dark roast. Uh, let me talk a little bit about some of the flavored coffees. They have the unicorn. What's that flavored like? I don't know. And neither do you. You won't find out till it shows up because it's, a, it's an R and D coffee bag. It's just, it is what it is. That that's it. You, you just don't know. That's the fun of it. Uh, if you want to go a little more certain, uh, you can get mom's carrot cake, uh, the intense blueberry and the mint chocolate chip. So those are some of their flavored coffees that are available at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster.